Hello and welcome to the session of Talking Tech, Women and Girls in ICT. My name is Ashmita Dev and I am a data science student at Drexel University. And today I'm delighted to be having a discussion about tech and tech careers with Lonnie Cosette. Talking Tech is a series celebrating girls and women in tech being recorded around the world between girls in ICT Day 2020 and Girls in ICT Day 2022. Girls in ICT Day is an international day marked on the fourth Thursday of each April. In 2021, Girls in ICT Day was held on April 22nd. The objective of Girls in ICT Day are to help create a global environment that empowers and encourages girls and young women to consider studies and careers in the growing field of information and communication technologies. The Talking Tech series is brought to you by the ITU, the UNICC, and the Office of the UN Secretary General's Envoy on Youth, and is in support of EQUALS, the global partnership of gender equality in the digital age. The goals of the series include to interest and inspire girls and younger women with information about a range of ICT careers that can be had bring before a broader audience some of the role model women in tech and share information about their career journeys and work. Showcase initiatives that are working with girls to support them in ICT studies and future ICT careers. Provide girls with young women in tech with a leadership opportunity to represent and promote a girls in tech organization with which they are involved and promote it to a broader international audience. To kick this session off, I am very excited to have this conversation with Lonnie Cassette, the Chief of Staff for Microsoft's newly launched UN Affairs team in New York. Hello, Lonnie, how are you today? I'm great. Thank you for the introduction, Ashmita. This is my most fun meeting all day, so I'm very excited to be here with you. I'm glad to hear that. So the first thing I wanted to ask is if you could talk about your journey into the world of technology. My journey, it's been a long one. You know, I came to tech a little bit later in my career. I joined Microsoft at the age of 40. So prior to that, I had worked as a journalist, which was always my passion when I was growing up. And I worked in corporate investigations. I went to law school later and practiced law. And I also spent some time at an NGO working on anti-corruption issues. So, you know, I think I came to tech with a lawyer's mind and a great deal of skepticism, I would say, about technology. That was 2010. And we were just beginning to think and talk about the cloud. It was mm -hmm. quite an interesting time to join. Yeah. So what part about the field of technology was like interesting to go from being a lawyer to being in Microsoft now? You know, that is a really good question. You know, the way I always approach my job in technology, I don't only thing that I have to think of it through the lens of a technologist. I, you know, thankfully we are empowered at Microsoft to ask tough questions and just to think about, you know, what's going on in the analog world and, you know, how does that fit and what does that mean for what's happening in the external world? You know, I realize in, in some careers, you've got to be the technologist, but I've been super happy to be in this position to, to ask hard questions, you know, thinking about privacy, you know, you can think about privacy online, offline. One of the first books I remember reading the filter bubble. I don't know if this is something that you've come across in school. I uh, haven't as of yet. <laughs> well, all kinds of interesting questions, you know, posed by sociologists, lawyers, I think makes for really interesting, you know, probing aspect and thinking about the work that we're doing every day. So in my work as a lawyer and, you know, part of our corporate affairs team and working in government affairs, we get to ask these, you know, bigger societal questions and even more so really now that we're talking about our technology and its application to what the UN is thinking about and what the UN cares about. I took a class at my university called the social aspects of information systems. So we very much got into how technology affects society in all different kinds of ways, in ways that we are very aware of and in ways that I didn't think about before. And I think it was really eye-opening to realize to always ask questions. And even if something minuscule or something that maybe your professor doesn't know the answer to yet, but it was really eye-opening to see how technology is 
basically immersed into our life all the time. Absolutely. No, I'm so excited to hear that you, you know, get to take that kind of class in your career path. And you were telling me a, a bit yesterday, your journey and how you ended up deciding on data science, which to me mm -hmm. is really exciting because I think it, it captures a lot of, you know, what we've already discussed around just the interdisciplinary aspects of how we think about technology and its impact on society. So I'm really excited for you and your career, you know, it's just becoming a more a topic among, you know, the non-technologists to think about how do we even, you know, design and build a data science project? You know, that's, it's basically looking at life. It doesn't, you don't have to be so fixated on what the technology is doing. You know, it's more the model that you're creating, the questions that you're asking, the data, where are you getting the data? Are you sharing it with others? <laughs> pretty, pretty basic questions that are really important for whatever outcome it is you're trying to achieve from, from the project. Absolutely. I think sometimes when people think about the technology world, they really just think about the very technical side. We think about coding and computers and uh, websites and creating apps and stuff like that. And I think it's very important to bring to light all the other aspects of it. And I think data science is a good fit for me in the way that I, yes, I do have to understand and learn the technical side of stuff, but also be able to ask those questions about data and see how they affect businesses or industries. So it's, it's a good middle ground, I think. Oh, yes, I completely agree. And I think it will also be fun for you and, and others starting your careers in that I anticipate that you know, part of your job, you know, to the world, I think is to be a champion of your field and, and how you practice and explain what data science can mean. You know, we talk about how can we think about using data science to better achieve the sustainable development goals? You know, mm -hmm. it's a big question. It's way up here. And there's a lot of explaining to do <laughs> around that, you know, I mean, just recently we've been involved in working with UN women and many organizations, UN actors and others, on the Generation Equality Forum. And really basic questions come up when we think about technology and data, you know, even thinking about who are the statisticians and when they get the data, you know, how are they labeling it? How are they collecting it? You know, you know, what, how disaggregated does it need to be? So for a bunch of people joining a campaign to design outcomes that move us forward to address gender equity, these are like pretty basic questions, you know, that are rather interdisciplinary from all aspects of, a, of an organization, from the data scientists to the policy teams, to the group of statisticians, you know, so I, I think it's a, a very exciting moment for you to be able to champion your field. Yeah, absolutely. Going off of that, I was told that you were an inaugural fellow at a data and society research institute in New York. So could you expand about that a little bit? <laughs> Yes, I'm interested that you found that. <laughs> you found that on the internet. I felt really lucky to be one of the inaugural fellows, and it was an interesting time. This would be like 2013, 2014, and just thinking about our industry, the level of scrutiny, you know, over the last five, six years, wow, we've been through a cycle. And Data and Society Research Institute is very much interdisciplinary, asking exactly these kinds of tough questions. So it was a really interesting time. What I was trying to understand is whether there's a market for privacy. And to do that, I was interviewing lots of venture capitalists and owners of startups to find out whether, you know, those who had these ideas that they were pitching and trying to, you know, make something, whether there was an appetite and a market for it. And, you know, I wonder if, if I would have done that project this year, as opposed to five years ago, I think things would be quite different. So I'm sure you will realize that in your career how fast technology moves and questions seem important now, and they might be even more important in a later day. Absolutely. I don't think there's ever going to be like a stop to technology. It's going to forever continue to improve. And we just have to be ready to go at the pace that technology is improving at. <laughs> yeah. You know, I was interesting when you articulated to me yesterday you know, in trying to decide, you know, what aspect of technology was of most interest to you. What really, you know, sparked my interest in our conversation was how you really, you know, approached this thoughtfully and made a very, you know, specific decision to go this particular route. So I went, was there something that inspired you to pursue a path in something that's, that's a little bit newer, as I understand it? 
Yeah. So my high school was very STEM tech oriented and they drilled us that you're going to most likely be in one of these realms. And we even had pathways. And I did the computer science pathway as a daughter of an Indian family. And I learned a lot. I actually did enjoy coding and stuff. And I enjoyed the problem solving aspect of it and like eventually making a game and seeing it work. Like it was really fun to see that. But also I know myself that I enjoy talking to people. I enjoy seeing an outcome that just isn't on a computer. And luckily enough, I was able to get an internship at Cal State Fullerton. And there I got to do a CS slash data science internship. And my mentor was really, really nice. And she helped me explore this new realm of data science. At the time, as a junior in high school, you're very oriented for SATs and PSATs and all the other standard tests that you need to take. And I did a project on is attendance and like SAT scores by state, like correlated, like the more you come to school, does that mean you're going to do better on the standardized test kind of situation? It's something that every high schooler is dealing with. And then I got to do research on that. And I used stuff from the Department of Education that was publicly available. And I got to aggregate that data, clean the data and be like, oh my God, there's years missing. What do I do with that? And like all the questions that I'm much more used to asking now, but as a junior in high school, it was not something I was used to. And I found it really interesting. And so that was really my like spark. I was like, this might be something I want to keep doing. And from there is kind of how I decided, yeah, I think data science might be the way for me. Yeah. Wow. That's such a cool path. I'm glad you identified that early. I mean, you have an ability to have such significant impact when you design the model and the project and what is the outcome you're looking for? Identifying the problems and the missing pieces. I'm quite excited about it as well. So I think it's quite exciting time to start that path. Yeah. Another question I had is, could you explain what you do as your job in tech right now? Yes. Well, this is all new. You mentioned, indeed, Microsoft recently launched a new team. So we're the UN Affairs team. And soon we will occupy some office space. So we're really, Microsoft's been engaging the UN for a long time already. And I think it's really in the last four or five years when we realized the same global problems that the UN is grappling with. If you look at the sustainable development goals, for example, you know, we need the world to do well for us to do well in the same way, you know, so our interests are are really aligned. You know, we've made some major commitments, you know, environmental sustainability, carbon removal, you know, our interest in tackling the digital divide, looking specifically, as I mentioned, on the gender digital divide, which is, you know, quite significant. Of course, just trust and security in our cloud is critical for governments and, you know, for our partners and customers. So I think it became this critical moment where we think that we can show up and we have something to add. We're not a member state, we're a company, but we're global, we're present a lot of places. You know, we've just all been through the solar winds attack. I don't know if this is something that came up, you know, in any of your classes, but that's a really big deal for all of us, you know, for regular people, for governments who are trying to figure out the problem and for Microsoft as well. And it takes a multi-stakeholder effort, you know, a lot of people coming to the problem to figure out how to resolve these kinds of issues. So that's why we're launching the office and we will be championing your field that you've chosen because we think that there's, you know, an important role in data science for a lot of these problems. Absolutely. I think nowadays, not just in large companies like Microsoft, but even smaller companies having a little bit of that data science field in there is mandatory at this point, just because it's so diverse in what it can do. I think it's very much in need now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. And I'm super excited also to talk about our shared interest in Bollywood. We can... Yes. I was just going to get to the activities you like to do right outside of the technology world. <laughs> yes. When we first spoke and, you know, I saw your resume and what you've been up to, I was like, wow, I should be just so cool. We have the same interests, you know, outdoor activities and stuff, but your interest in Bollywood, I've always wanted to be in a flash mob and even better if it was some sort of like Bollywood dance. So anyway, you have more to say about the <laughs> <laughs> what you're doing that, what you're doing, uh, cool, but one day we should do something like this. 
absolutely. I would love to be in a flash mob. It's been one of my dreams since I started dancing. I just thought like seeing it in movies and seeing random people come together and just all of a sudden have a good time for those like two minutes. It looked like so much fun and I really would like to do that. And I've like tried to get my friends together and do it, but I feel like they're too embarrassed to <laughs> dance in public. But yeah, I found it so interesting that you also enjoyed Bollywood dance. And it's something that's becoming a lot more popular nowadays, but before it was very much just something that I grew up with and other people who have immigrant families, like they're very used to it. But seeing it at my university, and then now I'm a captain of a competition team that we nationally tour. So like, it's really fun. <laughs> Yeah, that is so cool. And well, at least there's two of us who want to do this flash mob in New York. So <laughs> yeah, hopefully we can gather some more people. Philadelphia is really only like an hour and a half away. So like, I can come to you. That would be so cool. <laughs> yeah. So I think that wraps up our session today for Talking Tech, Women and Girls in ICT. So thank you so much, Lonnie, for having this conversation with me. I am humbled that I got to do this and it's great to meet you and I really wish you the best success in your career. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you for all the viewers that are watching.